Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm standing outside the Kodiak here and I have uh, one more major maintenance repair project that I'm gonna be doing to this. This is, you know, we're trying to get ready for our big trip. And uh, this is something that I've been meaning to get to for a while, been kind of putting it off, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started on it. And I hope that uh, we can just uh, get it done, get it done today and get it out of the way. What we're gonna be doing is replacing the two plastic fenders there. It's just some shrouds that bolt onto the side there that go over the, over the wheel wells. And um, the, the mounting screw hole locations around each one of those screws have been cracking and letting loose. So that's why I wanna go ahead and replace it. So we'll pull you in there so we can give you a little bit better shot of what we're talking about. So each one of these uh, mounting locations, which is a screw that goes through, you can see that screw has almost worked itself completely out. They're all starting to crack. This one's cracked right there. All of them are pretty much starting to crack, but some of them are worse than others. That one's cracked through, so the screw's not holding it there. This one's, you know, cracked right there. And we got one more down there holding it. So I need to replace these because this plastic is not holding up very well. So I've already got a replacement set of fenders. I got those earlier this year from Dutchman, and we're gonna go ahead and get them bolted on now. There is a support on the inside. There's a little angle bracket made out of aluminum that attaches to the frame and then comes down here and supports the center part right there as well. So let's go to the other side. I'll show you that as well. All right, here we are on the opposite side. We're having the same kind of issues like this one right there. The, the uh, you know, the screw is not holding it because it's the, the plastic has broken out. These aren't quite as bad as the other side. Now this one is right there. You can see it's completely come loose right there but we're gonna go ahead and just replace both of these fenders today. I wanted to give you a little bit closer up, more detailed shot of what the cracks look like around the uh, mounting holes of the fender there before we get it all off. Cause I know that other camera doesn't show it too well. That's what we're looking at right there. So here is our new replacement fenders. Got those directly from uh, Dutchman RV. And all of the screw locations are gonna to have to be drilled out right there. All right, and then what I'm planning on doing with these, instead of using the screws that the manufacturer used to hold these on, I'm gonna be using bolts. So I've got these button head stainless steel quarter inch bolts right here. And that's what I'm gonna to use to secure all these. I think it'll give it a nice look there with the stainless steel head at the uh, bolting locations. I've also got some stainless steel washers if the washer will fit, but I don't think, yeah, see the washer is gonna be a little too big there. So we'll just have the, uh, the button head, which is a lot wider than the original screw that the manufacturer uses there. And then on the backside, we'll put a washer and then I've got these stainless steel lock nuts that we can use as well. That's what I got left. I didn't know if I had enough to complete the job, but if not, we've got a box there of just normal uh, stainless steel hex nuts as well. So. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started on it. I'm not sure exactly the process to get this done. I'm just gonna dive in and uh, get going on it. I think we're just gonna go ahead and we'll just do one side at a time. We're just gonna go ahead and remove the screws. These were just self-tapping screws that go right into the aluminum trim right here. Just a self-tapper, that's all it is. Okay, so change of plans on the hardware. I did not realize that some of the screws go actually go into the the, um, the base of the, you know, the floor of the, the RV there. I was thinking that all the screws were just being held on to that aluminum trim that we would just be able to simply, you know, bolt, put a bolt and a nut on there. But since we're actually going into the wood or the base of the RV, I'm just gonna go back with the original screws I don't have any replacement screws on hand and I need to get this job done. So I would have to order some of these things, which I can do, but I think we're just, uh, for the sake of getting this done now, we're gonna go ahead and reuse the original screws. I do have a box here of some zinc plated washers, number 10 washers, and I think I'm gonna end up using these right here 
to give it a little bit better backing and support. And the zinc should hold up for a little while. But what I'll probably end up doing is trying to f uh, find the proper size screw and stainless steel washer for McMaster car and get those ordered and get them coming. And that will be a simple unscrew this screw, put a new one in there. But I want to go ahead and get these things mounted on there. So I'll replace the uh, drill bit with the drill here, whatever size I need for number 10, and go ahead and get the, we'll go ahead and get the new fenders here drilled out. As you can see, it's just molded there, but there's an indention where all the holes go. It should line up really well. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, get these guys drilled out. We'll just start with a couple screws on the ends there and see how they line up. Got a uh, five thirty seconds drill bit. Super easy. We'll see. I think it's going to be simple enough that I can go ahead and get two of them started in here to hold it in place. And then all I got to do is just, I can simply, see that's working good right there. I can still come in here with my drill and drill those holes out. Yeah, we're gonna have to drill them. These are in a little bit different place than originally. All right, so change of plans again. I'm learning that the, uh, the holes in the original fenders that I took off are not in the same location, like they're not molded in the same location as these. I, I would have figured that they would have been an exact copy. But whenever I put them up here, when I put the one up here and put the end screw in, none of the other holes are uh, lining up. So we're just gonna have to self tap some uh, new holes in the aluminum here to uh, get these mounted on, which is no problem. I just was hoping that this was gonna be a super easy um, bolt on replacement fender, but it's not working out. The other thing that I need to do to, in order to get this to stay up some, the bottom of these fenders, the way this radius comes around the bottom, I'm gonna have to trim some of this off so that it wraps around the bottom of this uh, aluminum trim because the way it is right now, I just can't get it to go up far enough. See what I mean? It's hitting down here, so I need to trim some of this off. So I've got a razor knife. I'm just gonna work on that and uh, try to get these things fitted the best that I can. I'm having to kind of manipulate this plastic a little bit so that it will kind of uh, conform to the original location of the, uh, of the original fender. So I'm having to kind of push up on the plastic there a little bit. It's just kind of like it's squeezed up a little bit more than the original. So I am going to hold it right there. And I've got a small drill I'm going to use for a pilot. That should help. Get, let the screw get started instead of trying to drill it and get it to screw in there. Hopefully we've got a place that we can start our screw just like that right there. And I'm just running them in with the drill and then I'm gonna hand fit them at the end just like that to make sure I'm not over, over torquing it and squeezing the plastic too hard. That's looking good. I trimmed the bottom of it right here a little bit with a uh, razor knife so that it wasn't trying to like, you know, hit two points there and stick it out a little further. So it looks like it's fitting in there actually pretty good right there. So I'll have to drill a hole in the bottom here and run, because what they did was they put some extra screws, one on, on each end through the bottom right there. See what I mean by them having to kind of manipulate it. So if we hold it up in here where it needs to go, drill us a hole there. Already looking a lot better. This is where they added the uh, two extra screws on the outer end. It's not countersunk here, but this will help give it a little extra support. 
just like that. Keep this in from trying to flap. Okay, and we'll just do that on the opposite end there. Same thing, and this one will be ready to go. Oh, we still got the center support that we got to drill to. We got our center bracket, and that, that thing will kind of move a little bit side to side, so I'm just gonna eyeball the center of this thing and uh, shoot a hole through it. And it goes all the way to there, so. Give it a little support on the back side. There we go. All right, one side is done. Real happy about that right there. All right, not as bad as I was thinking it was gonna be, it worked out. So here's the one that we took off and you can see, you know, cracked there, busted out there, started breaking out that hole, breaking out that hole there, and that right there too, so. Glad to get these replaced because I was afraid that, you know, when we're headed down the highway that these screws are going to start failing and then this thing is just going to start, you know, getting ripped off there because of the wind pressure against it. So, all right, one more to go. All right, so we're on the opposite side now, the uh, driver's side of the camper. One thing that is different on this side is the bracket that holds, that supports the center. This had actually come loose at some point during one of our journeys and it was uh, missing. The screw came out and then the bracket ended up falling out of there as well. So I had made another bracket and bolted this in using that quarter inch button head bolt there. So we'll go back with this one. This is what I was hoping to use, this look right there. But the original screws are gonna work just fine. Just using a 7 16 wrench on the back side there. I lost a nut in there somewhere, but that's all right. Probably down here in the grass. Oh, there it is in my hand. <laughs> all right, you can see the original screw location right there. Oh, I got another bolt in there. I forgot about that in the center. Dang it. All right, I'm gonna have to backtrack here let's put a screw back in this to hold it up I forgot there was a bolt on the bottom that'll hold it up for now Dang, that one is tight wow what the hell what happened there geez this is just completely locked up I don't know what happened there. There's no reason for that thread to be that galled to that, whatever it happened. It is completely locked together. Are you kidding me? I can't even twist it. I can't get a good angle on it. All it is is a, a stainless steel bolt and nut. It's gonna strip this thing out. I'm trying to force it. I've got new hardware I can put on here. I just got to get it apart. Oh my God. That beats all I've ever seen. I might have to get out here with my cutoff disc and just cut the, cut the thing off because I can't get it to... Yeah, see, it's already rounding off the head of the bolt now. I knew that was gonna happen, so. There's always gotta be something to screw you up. There's no reason for that to happen right there. No, no reason at all. There's no dirt on it. There's, I don't see how anything could have hit that. I'll just get my cutoff disc and cut the, cut the thing off. All right, so we've got the uh, portable cutoff wheel right there. I'm gonna get on there and use that to cut the head of that bolt off. Not the easiest place to get in to cut this. Yeah. 
There it goes. All right, we got her. I'm gonna let that cool off before I grab it. Ah. Screw, there we go. All right, we got a couple more screws to get out. Got that one there. And then one more over here. All right, on with the new one. Just gonna start with the center. That center hole. And then uh, do the same as we did on the other side, just re-drill them. I think this one, these two may line up. They're just slightly off, so they're probably gonna try to pull over to that one, but the other ones we'll have to drill. These corners, like I said, I, I've been trimming those with the razor knife to get them to lay in there in that radius nice. So you gotta trim it just a little bit. Just doing a little bit more, just like that. Yeah, now it's fitting that radius a lot nicer. All right, last of the screws there, all we got the center support to do. For these two bolts for the brackets, I'm just gonna come in behind it right here and drill it. Let me grab the wrench and the bolt here. Since there's already holes drilled in that aluminum bracket, I should be able to just follow. Yeah, I'll just be able to follow the hole with the drill bit and, uh, and drill them in there. And I'm gonna use the, um, the nylock, nylon nuts for these instead. Just like that. Right there. I'll go ahead and get this one. Get this one in. The battery's about to die at any minute now. I'm trying to get this finished up before I have to go get another battery. There we go. There's the one. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom one here too. Get it drilled as well. <laughs> done. There we go. Job is completed. I'm glad that that's finally done. I've been putting that off for a couple of months, getting to it. Finally got it done. I'm gonna have a much better peace of mind going down the highway, doing a long haul, not having to worry about those weakened screws and those weakened screw mounts, letting loose an offender trying to fly off there whenever we're uh, driving. But it wasn't that bad to do. It's more kind of a, a little bit more of an awkward thing to do really when you got to get down there and try to drill new holes and things like that. So you just need some basic hand tools, you know, maybe a little drill motor and a set of drill bits, some wrenches, maybe even some replacement screws and uh, you can get this done yourself pretty easy. But it worked out pretty good and it's got a nice solid feel to it now, unlike the, uh, the originals. That's just dust on there. I got to just kind of wipe them off. They've been sitting in the garage for a couple of months collecting dust. But that worked out pretty good. One more look at the uh, the other side. Nice and rigid, just gotta clean it. So that is gonna work out really good right there. Now, not all RVs have these plastic uh, fenders on here. 
I'm not exactly sure what you call those, uh, you know, some kind of fender flare. I believe some of the, I believe the Aspen Trail doesn't actually have these on there. It's just a different trim, you know, some have them and some don't. But, you know, after two years, I was a little surprised to see that the uh, screw mounts, the, the, where the holes are, you know, it was cracking and coming off there. I don't know if that is a common thing. They might have had a bad run of plastic at the factory where they was doing those. I have no idea. But that might be something that you would consider looking at, too, seeing if yours are cracking where the screws are. And if they are, you might consider getting, getting in touch with your manufacturer and, uh, you know, getting a set coming and maybe having them because it did take a little while to get those um, you know just having supply issues because of the whole backlog with the you know COVID issues out there so check yours and see because you might need to do the same thing but anyway that's that is the last major uh, task that I had planned for the Kodiak before we head out on our big trip only thing I got left to do is uh, I've been reorganizing my barbecue kit and I'm getting ready to put that back on there now. I'm gonna do that later today, put the bag back on there and uh, put all of the uh, plastic bins on there and have those ready. So other than that right there, that was the last thing. We already talked about this up here, the uh, trailer tray, we got our new cover. I gotta go get some, uh, we're gonna take both the tanks off, go get those refilled, cause one's empty and one's about half, half full. So we need to get some fresh propane in there and get that done. And then um, we will mount the generator up. I'm going to wait until the day before we're ready to leave. And we're going to mount the generator up there then and get it bolted down, get it locked into place. So that's about it for this video. We're looking forward to getting going on our new trip. And we'll be sure to uh, bring you guys along whenever that journey starts. So we will see you guys later.